Guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you 10 mistakes people make when they're soldering. If you watch this whole video and you say, I've never made one of them mistakes, then I'm sorry, but you're lying. Right, we're gonna get straight into it. And this is number one. This is definitely one that everyone would have done at some point, I can guarantee it. You've got your connector or whatever you're soldering. You've got the item you're soldering it to. You solder it on. You have to excuse the angles here. I'm trying to solder cack-handed. You make a nice solder joint. You're really pleased with it. That was actually a really bad one, but. <laughs> and then you realize you forgot to put your heat shrink on or the cap for your connector. Everyone has done that. Everyone has soldered something and then realized afterwards that they've not put the heat shrink on. Number two is choosing the wrong iron. You can get so many different soldering irons and they range from very small, low powered ones to really high powered ones that you can solder the world. But depending on what you're planning on soldering, it does matter what soldering iron you get. So I've got a um, temperature controllable 75 watt soldering iron, which for, most, for the most part in the RC hobby, that is adequate. I've got this old one as well, this is 50 watts. And again, for most things, it's not too bad. Although I did find on this, you had to have the temperature all the way to the red for it to really sort of do anything. And then you can get like smaller ones that are like 25 watts and stuff. And I've seen a few people um, on other channels reviewing the little ones that plug into the batteries. They're fine for small gauge wires like this. But anything bigger really, you need a much more powerful one. The problem is with the low power ones, as soon as you touch to where you're soldering, you get a massive amount of heat transfer. And having a more powerful, so a higher wattage soldering iron means that as soon as you touch there, it's got enough power to keep that heat going. If you get a low power one, it's just gonna take all that heat away and then you're gonna have a bad solder joint. More power means more heat transfer, which means easier soldering or better soldering. But like I said, it depends on what you're actually soldering. If you're soldering really thin gauge like wire, you should be all right with a low power one. What are we on, number three? Too much solder. I see it all the time. People just put way too much solder on. I've made a couple of examples for you here. There's one, look, massive blob under there. It's actually connected. It's not gonna come off, but way too much. Another one there, look, so much solder that it's melted the plug, but again, way too much. Now this final one is borderline. This has come straight off of a, a Spectrum battery. I've not done anything. This has come straight from the factory. But again, although it's a good solder joint, I would also argue that, that is a little bit too much for what you need. This is probably the most popular one where people argue with me that no, it's not too much solder. It's up to you. I mean, it's not going to come apart. Even that one's not going to come apart and it's going to do the job. But it's, it's just a waste. You can do it with a lot less. In this hobby, it's not really going to um, be a problem too much solder but if you're working you work with like small circuit boards and stuff too much solder can actually affect it anyway here is what i would say is the perfect amount in fact i could probably do a little drop more i'm not sure how well you can see that a good solder joint you should still be able to see the outline of the actual cable and even i mean this, this has got really fine cores on it but you should still be able to see the outline of the cable like i showed you on that one that's just a blob of solder you can't really see much on there and the reason is and the reason you want to really be able to see the outline is because you can see that it's actually holding there you can't see that might just be a blob of solder over the wire and it's not holding very well but yeah and i like to have a nice shiny joint as well the shinier your joint the better right talking about too much solder there's two little solder as well, but there is one with not enough solder. You can just see, you can see there's a gap down the side there. I mean, from there, it looks okay. Again, you can see a gap in the side. Example for you, you can see that one, it's not good. It's only gripping on, it's holding on for dear life. And you can probably see just in there, a big gap in there as well. And yeah, so I just pulled that one off. So <laughs> that's what she said. Number five or six, whatever we're on, no tinning or not tinning the cable. And that's one of the reasons you don't have enough solder sometimes is because the cables haven't been tinned. Tinning is putting a thin layer of solder over the cable. Good technique, so bad technique is another one. We'll talk about that in a minute, but a good technique for tinning, put the iron under the cable and then just rub it across the top. You see how quick that was? And that cable is tinned. You also want to be tinning the other side as well. So if you're putting a cable in there, you tin the cable and you tin the connector. If you don't tin a cable, what happens is when you solder it, it might hold on there, but you'll end up like this one. You'll end up, you'll end up with loose strands and stuff where because the solder hasn't gone all the way through the cable, through all the cores, you get loads of like little stragglers coming out of it if you don't tin it. And like I mentioned, you get the same effect as not enough solder and you end up, you could pull the connection off. 
I've lost count, but dirty irons. If you've got a dirty iron, you're gonna have a dirty solder joint as well, or no solder joint at all. The top tip is to get a tip cleaner. Top tip, do you get it? <laughs> Um, get a tip cleaner. Usually they come with like a wire wall and there's, this one's got like a flux, um, like a layer of flux wax under it or flux re reservoir. Dip it in there before you do your joint. That should give you a clean, clean iron. You should always tin your iron as well before you do any soldering. So the next one is using the wrong tip. I see so many people using one of these like pointy ones to try and solder connectors. You're not gonna do very well with that. If you use one of these little tips like this, when you put it on there, you've got hardly any contact patch with what you're trying to solder. So you're not gonna be able to transfer that heat that you need. If you use a nice chisel tip like that, when you lay it across there, look, you can see that heat transfer is pretty much the same size as that. For this application, I always use a chisel tip. This is more for circuit boards. So I think this must be about number nine. Just gonna quickly talk about technique. Now again, it's hard to talk about technique. There's so many different techniques you can use depending on what application. This is just like the RC application and doing connectors as you've probably guessed by this video. But what I see a lot of people doing, I see a lot of people feeding the solder in like this as if you see people are arc welding and this is how you arc weld like this. I don't feel that's a very good technique because what happens is you get a load stuck to the soldering iron and not actually on the uh, the joint you're trying to solder. For plugs like this, and if you've tinned the plug and tinned the wire, all you should need to do is dab a little bit of solder on your iron. Just hold it over the top like that. Put something underneath so the plug doesn't move. Hold it over the top, wait for it to go nice and soft, keep it nice and still, let go of it, let it dry. And that is much easier than trying to feed it in like this. The other thing you can do, if it's a small cable, is hold it underneath the plug like that, and then feed it from the top. So once the solder's melted, you can feed it in from the top like that. It just, it makes it awkward if you're trying to get it onto the soldering iron and onto the, the metal. What you need to do, or the cable, you need to have the soldering iron on the opposite side of where you're feeding with the solder. But like I said, if you've got enough solder on your cable and enough solder on the plug, it should be a case of a little dab on your iron and then just hold it on, and that should be enough. And I've left this one till last because if you've subscribed throughout this video and you're from the US, you might unsubscribe now. And it's about the pronunciation of solder. Quite a few people, when I talk about it, say to me, you're saying it wrong. It's solder. S-O-D spells sod. S-O-L-D spells sold. Put an E and R at the end. Solder. Solder. On that bombshell, on that bombshell, on that bombshell, on that bombshell, it is time to end. Thank you so much for watching. Good night. Turn it up, I was up, buddy.